Why should investors who are in it for the long haul bother to protect against crashes? We think for two simple reasons. First, the peace of mind and the quality of sleep that comes with knowing that you've prepared for the worst case scenario. The second reason boils down to pure math. In a crisis, tail hedging delivers outsized payoffs, which should be reinvested into underlying equity at attractively low levels. This means that you've got more dollars working for you in anticipation of subsequent recovery. This process explains how tail hedging can actually improve the compounding profile of existing portfolios and bring about the potential for higher absolute returns as well. How's it everyone? My name is Bruno and I'm from Ironclad Asset Management. In this video, I'll introduce you to tail risk hedging, which we use primarily in conjunction with trend following as a one-two punch to complement existing equity exposure. Please find us over at LinkedIn and myself on Twitter to learn more. But for now, I'll invite you to sit back, relax, and let's get into it. As long-term investors, a key to our success over time is simply being exposed to a portfolio of well-diversified risky assets. Let's take a look at global equities, for example. We see that global equity has done really well over time, delivering attractively high absolute returns. But those returns certainly didn't come in a straight line. They came with lots of squiggles up and down, which we call volatility, with the occasional large loss which we call a deep drawdown. Now those deep drawdowns sometimes came over very long episodes, such as the early 2000s and in 2022. They also sometimes came very sharply and suddenly in a crash-like environment, like 2008 or in 2020. Now you might be thinking that this is a feature and not a bug, that this is the risk in the risk premium we harvest from equity. But what we know from the simple math of how compounding works is that excessive volatility and deep drawdowns penalize absolute returns over time. So let's think this through together. If a portfolio suffers a 10% drawdown, it subsequently requires 11% to get back to break even. However, if a portfolio suffers a 50% drawdown, it actually requires 100% subsequently to get back to break even. We call this penalization for excessive volatility and deep drawdowns, variance drag. Let's take a look at the variance drag penalty in action. Let's imagine a portfolio that delivers 10% average returns without fail each and every year. And now let's imagine that such a portfolio can generate those types of returns at different levels of volatility, with very low volatility on the left-hand side and very high volatility on the right-hand side. How would these different portfolios compound over time? At low levels of volatility, the compounded return of the portfolio ends up being quite similar to the average return of the portfolio. But as we add more and more volatility, we suffer more and more drawdowns, and we require higher and higher subsequent returns to get back to break even. The impact can be so severe at extremely high levels of volatility that we can end up with a negative compounded return despite generating 10% on average every year. This is simply because we fall too much for our portfolio to subsequently recover again. And this is really where a good tail hedging strategy can come in. There are a variety of instruments that can be used to implement a tail hedging strategy, the most well known of which being put options. If you're familiar with puts, please feel free to skip this section. A put option gives its holder the right, but not the obligation, to sell an asset at a specific price at or before a specified date. Puts benefit from a falling market, which is why we use them to hedge tail risk. You can have fringe cases like with meme stocks where it gets more complicated, but this is true the majority of the time. A put option is functionally similar to buying car insurance. You pay an upfront premium, and in exchange, you're covered in a crash if catastrophe happens. The distance between where the market currently is and the strike price is akin to the excess that you're on the hook for before insurance kicks in. Like car insurance, you expect to lose money on your tail hedge portfolio over time. Now let's have a look at some empirical evidence of a tail hedging strategy in action. Ben Eifert, in his brilliant primer on tail hedging, illustrated the long run cumulative simulated performance of a systematic tail hedge strategy over time. The strategy generated massive payoffs during market crises, exactly when our risky asset portfolio suffers deep drawdowns. However, like insurance, Ben's approach lost capital in isolation over time. Now, I know what you're thinking, so why bother? I assure you there's method in the madness. It turns out that the answer lies in looking at the combined effect at the portfolio level of the tail hedge and the underlying risky asset portfolio in combination. Ben's work showed how the combined portfolio actually generated a higher return with lower volatility and shallower drawdowns than the exact same portfolio without the hedge. Ben compared a risky asset portfolio made up of 60% equity and 40% bonds with the same portfolio with the tail hedge attached. Ben showed how the combined portfolio with the tail hedge actually managed to generate a higher return in absolute terms with lower volatility and shallower drawdowns than the exact same portfolio without the hedge. How can this be possible? It's because we've addressed the most harmful effects of variance drag. Now, 
I concede. Building a proper tail hedging strategy is no small feat. It requires skill and it requires experience. And we'll certainly dive into a little bit about how these portfolios come together in future videos. Important thing is to just remember that the principles remain the same. So when does tail hedging not work? Well, in our view, tail hedging does one extremely important thing uniquely well, and that is to offer defense against sudden and severe market crashes. Speaking plainly, we don't rely on it to deliver in any other market circumstance. We don't don't rely on it to come to our aid during slow grinding bear markets. For that we much prefer trend following and we've made several videos about why which you can find in the description box below. We also don't rely on it for more shallow drawdowns. It's called tail risk hedging after all and clearly we expect it to lose money in isolation during sideways markets or when the underlying market drifts upwards over time. We'll discuss more advanced approaches that look to mitigate this bleed to deliver what is known as a carry neutral tail hedging strategy but the principle remains the same. The tail hedging strategy should be judged with the risky asset portfolio it's attached to. In conclusion, tail hedging can play an extremely important and unique role as part of a diversified multi-asset portfolio. It offers the expectation of a reliable outsized payoff during a crash-like environment like 2008 or 2020. It puts us in the enviable position of reinvesting those outsized payoffs in underlying equity at opportune times so that we've got more capital working in our favor in anticipation of the subsequent recovery and overall it allows for better compounding over time which means that we can expect more from our portfolios if you made it this far into the video i'd like to thank you for your time if you have any questions about this strategy or any other please feel free to leave them in the comment section or reach out to us on our website i left all the information in the description box below thank you and i'll see you in the next one